I'm going to go ahead and gavel us. I'm going to go ahead and call this session of the City of Bonnie Lake Hearing Examiner to order. For the record, today is January 17th, 2023. Still not used to writing that three. Uh, approximately nope. 1 p.m. Huh? Oh, sorry. I, I heard a noise. Uh, January 17th, 2023 at approximately 1 p.m. here in the City of Bonnie Lake. And we have one item on the agenda. And uh, this relates to uh, the Spruill appeal of a notice of violation and civil penalty. Um, but I was informed uh, by city staff in advance of the hearing uh, that the parties have come to an agreement. And uh, so essentially the goal today is to uh, determine uh, sort of what is required. And, and I think the plan will ultimately be for I, the hearing examiner, to produce an order that essentially uh, explains that no penalties will be assessed so long as things get carried out. So my name is Andrew Reeves. I serve as the hearing examiner here in the city of Bonnie Lake and uh, already explained what I'll be doing today. And ultimately uh, with that, I think we can get started and I'll get the uh, planning staff sworn in. So thank you for being here. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth and testimony you give here today? I do. And if you could state and explain, sorry, state and spell your name and explain who you are. Uh, Jason Sullivan, and I'm the Planning and Building Supervisor for the City of Bonnie Lake. Uh, my name is spelled J-A-S-O-N-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N. Um, and what comes today more specifically is an appeal of civil penalties. Um, the applicant did not appeal the notice of violation within the 15 days. Um, so the city's position is the notice of violation is unappealable as part of the civil penalty. Uh, but they did appeal the civil penalty, I think, of $2,000 or $1,000 within the 15-day window. Um, during that time, he has also entered the, the property owner has also entered into a work plan to get the work completed. Um, so we're asking the hearing examiner to hold the civil penalties in abeyance um, for the period of the work plan. Um, if the work is completed consistent with the work plan, uh, we would be fine dismissing the civil penalties. Um, however, if the work's not completed within the time frame provided in the work plan, <laughs> Um, we would want to enforce the civil penalties that, that we've already enforced, plus possibly additional civil penalties for failure to comply. Got it. So essentially, under the municipal code, and perhaps it'll change one day, but uh, there's limited options uh, without going to hearing once civil penalties have been assessed. Is that accurate? That is correct. And our, posi right. our, our, our position or our thought... Um, and I'm just going to pull that up real quick. Uh, that's what my notes were. I had all the, the yeah. statutory sections. And yeah, and that's what, <laughs> that's what I figured. So I'll work, I'll work through it. So um, under our our thought process is um, under 14.130.120, um, there's a provision about during the appeal, you can affirm, vacate, or modify the assessment of civil penalties. Um, and then it goes on when you make those considerations under under C three C four I full IV I'm sorry three C IV it talks about other relevant factors um, and in this position we're considering the fact that the the property owner has entered into a work plan as an other relevant factor to modify the uh, civil penalty to hold it in abeyance um, for that uh, period of time. And the way I always like to think about these situations is it's a sort of a carrot or or a stick thing, but this is in my mind, even though maybe the code could be altered so that it's, you know, clear, maybe more clear or administratively gives gives you you and your team more authority in the long run to not necessarily have to come to me. But but the idea is the ultimate goal of code enforcement is compliance. Correct. And so, you know, this this uh, party is has already signed the agreement. They're working toward compliance. So the thought is, you know, I am essentially going to modify that penalty such that, you know, two thousand. I don't know the number because that's also whatever it was, a thousand or two thousand dollars. Yeah, something like that. Is not going away, but what it's doing is it's held in abeyance so long as everything is complete and if everything's complete then it'll go away sure. uh, but if if uh you know someone wakes up and and decides eh, i don't want to do this anymore 
then it'll immediately become enforceable. And I will look closely at my authority because, again, that was in my notes. But uh, I, my intent, and maybe you can help ensure that that city staff had the same thought, that my intent, and this is common in these situations, is to essentially write it so that, we A, we don't have to come back here uh, in the future for Correct. further modification. But B, that penalty is now due by a date certain. And furthermore additional daily whatever you know whatever the code allows and additional penalties kick in and if possible i even like to give some more discretion uh, you know in my modifications such that rather than have you know me give the exact number uh you know i like to give some thought to it so that it's not totally arbitrary meaning you know i give guidance but i also i find that if i've been too explicit and you know it can get challenging when when life happens. Does that make yes. sense? Yeah, and the way we do civil penalties, I think is a little different than other jurisdictions. Um, we only do it on the days that we document the violation, which means we physically have to go to the site and take a picture of it to document the violation. So you could never get into a situation where it just is a running clock. It's only the days that we go and document it. So okay, even that's what I'm saying. So even if the order said just additional civil penalties is provided in the code, it would only by our code it would only be the days that we physically go document it. So we literally have to go to the site, take a picture, and that becomes a day of the civil penalty. So if we don't go for three months, there's no penalties within that three month window. If that makes okay. sense. And, and, well, I think it makes sense, and I also think that you guys, intentional or not, I don't know. Intentionally have accounted for some case law that ha that I think a lot of jurisdictions have not yet accounted for. And uh, that case, I think it was a colleague of mine. I'm pretty sure it wasn't me, I, I but uh, in the city of Kent, I believe. And there's been other cases since. But uh, the idea being we've gotten to a point sometimes with these penalties. I won't name jurisdictions or hearing examiners, but I am aware of a situation where a penalty had gotten over $300,000. Yep. And go to what end, you know, like what is the, the function? Um, so thank you for, for clarifying and explaining that. I think that further, you know, points out the fact that, you know, the goal is not to just rack these up. It's to try to get compliance. Now, that said, uh, I assume the does the which I, again, don't have in front of me because of my move, uh, the correction Voluntary correction agreement, does it have a date certain built into it already? It, it does have a date certain built into it. Okay, so what I often like to do if it, in other situations, but maybe I'll look at it and determine what makes sense. But I, I like to ensure that it's their burden on a certain date to call you guys and go, hey, come inspect, I'm done. And, and if they haven't, then they should be aware you know that that's a triggering point potentially uh, you know for for fines to come in into play and or don't be surprised if uh you know planning staff shows up uh, you know essentially you have consented to that review on that day uh so you don't have any trespass or any of those things but uh that, that's what i've been like you know trying to do evolving in in code enforcement over time to sort of you know, again, the goal isn't to trap or trick anyone. The goal is nope. let's get compliance, get things done, and, and do it in an efficient way. Does that all make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so the only exhibits then would be the three, I believe. It would be the correction notice, the notice of violation, uh, and the uh, okay. voluntary correction agreement. Uh, so I will deem those admitted. Uh, clearly, we went through notice, and it's also a, 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 a appeal, not a public hearing, as it were. Uh, but I do have determined, and you have, and you can verify for me, Mr. Sullivan, that uh, the property owner is on the same page. You, yeah, we we sent, we explained to them what we were doing with the hearing examiner, and also sent them an email letting them know when the date of the hearing would be, and that they could or could not attend, given that we're. We're asking for their appeal to upheld, basically. We hope, that, we hope they're working on the project instead of Correct. hanging out here is, is the Correct. idea. Um, excellent. 
So then I think I have everything I need. Um, I don't have a template, I don't think, but I, I have plenty of them from other jurisdictions and I will pick the very best one and improve upon it uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, we, we get, because this is technically our first, well, it's, I guess it's not our first code enforcement, but it's our first. It's our first civil penalty appeal. That, that's it. So we'll, you know, we'll make sure that uh, that we do it right, and uh, we'll get that out in a timely manner, and uh, that'll be our first matter of the new year. So I think with that, we can conclude the first matter, and then if you just wanted to quickly chat uh, about procedural things unrelated to this, if you want to stop the recording, that'd be great. Yep.